Trilogy. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Trilogy. Well, let's get into this one. Racism. Like, does white supremacy exist in all forms, engulfing every aspect of our life? Or is that just bad titling? You see, um, we have to understand what we're trying to define. And this whole rant right now is based off of the debate that just recently happened between Schultz and Tariq. Nah, shit. For the Brilliant Idiots podcast. I have to applaud both sides for uh, being open to having such a, you know, such a controver- uh, controversial debate. But at the same time, you know, uh, it's more so for ratings. Trump is president and everybody feels white supremacy is about to destroy the world. Now, what are my views about white supremacy? I hate when this damn computer does that. But whatever. What are my views about white supremacy? Well, if we look at what it means to be white, um, I think that will clearly answer the question and bring both sides of this debate together. So, in antiquities of this racial conflict, race never really existed. There was only ethnic backgrounds and cultural differences. Over the last, whatever, 500 years, I guess, the rich of the rich, who so happened to be Caucasian, created a construct that anybody else who was not of their, I guess, Aryan uh, blood descent is black. Not, you know, African or just anybody who is not in their direct lineage is black. From that exclusive club and the propagation of that exclusivity, they created a wealthy lifestyle. They began to use their influence to control governments. And we bring ourselves to 2017, where that establishment, the ripples, the ripple effect of that establishment still exists now. So I believe when we're talking about white supremacy, we aren't literally speaking about Caucasian people right now. We are speaking about a lineage that has been passed down to only, uh, I guess, benefit a specific group that happened to be Caucasian. The problem is, in our everyday lifestyle, we are either helping or hurting that original cause. And I'm not going to get into all those different details of how we can help or hurt. I'll probably say that for a different video. But it kind of comes around to my beliefs on green economics. Because green economics is such a difficult thing for people to wrap their head around, I have to take my personal bias and align with black economics. But if you actually study and understand how the system runs, black economics is white supremacy. <gasps> yes. Black economics plays into the very banking systems that are oppressing and destroying black people. So using the dollar for anything, spending, and if you understand financials or just wealth, you cannot create wealth without spending. If everybody just keeps their money, no wealth will be created. And wealth is a whole other thing to be defined, but truly wealth is a, is a perspective of thought from others about yourself. So, perception is a very important topic when it comes to wealth and when it comes to the disparity between one community and another. But when we're speaking about white supremacy, we cannot just look at what's happening right now and then say, oh, He's rich, but he happens to be white, so that means he's a white supremacist. He's rich, and he happens to be black, so that he must be a token black person playing a role for white supremacy. We have to understand what money is, and why people become rich. What literal lifestyle choices they take on to become rich. Of course, we have families who pass down wealth, so I guess it would be easier to pinpoint the Rothschilds or the Rockefellers to say that they are white supremacists. But they did not implement the establishment that they are actually living off of in this point of time. So... When we hear the arguments between Schultz and Tariq Nasheed, Schultz is trying to dive deeper to get Tariq to expand his argument to be more detailed on who the white supremacists are. Tariq does not want to open his argument and believes that it is up to individuals like Schultz and others to expose who the white supremacists are. We, we bring ourselves to a stalemate based on the premise of their arguments and because nobody is really open to moving your budget. And it doesn't help anything. But the debate does help 
the ones searching for the answer understand that it is the division in itself that creates the conundrum. So, I guess both of them are right. You're right, because if I am afraid to unite with my white brother because he's not going to pinpoint or has or lacks the ability to pinpoint who among him are the ones who are racist or not so much racist, but um, but uh, basically apply themselves to the dogma of white supremacy, then I have to apply myself to black economics. And that might, from their perspective, look as look like a reverse racism because they themselves are not trying to participate in white supremacy. That, I can understand that conundrum, I can understand that back and forth, but it still helps nobody. So what do I take from this debate, or what do I take in terms of the next step? It is realistically to keep waking people up to the reality that green economics is the true answer. It is the only way to truly destroy white supremacy. It is the only way to truly empower black people while not subjugating white people. And unless you actually just want to subjugate white people, like who, like that's, I guess that's your prerogative, but in my world, you're going to be destroyed. Like you'll be destroyed, you're destroying yourself. If your aim is to, think about it, white people right now are probably like the oldest white person you're finding is 100 years old, 100 and something. And they themselves would have to have been taught to believe and think the way they think. That was even outlined in their debate that, you know, a lot of white people um, who are very racist are poor, dirt poor, they're dirt poor racist, but they, that's the only thing they can hang on to is the, is the belief that in their supporti- superiority of their white skin allows them uh, to have that pride, right, that they won't be killed, even though <laughs> they are being killed, even though the stats aren't on their side. But they also explain that that is how the white supremacists in this conversation are able to take advantage of them and take their money and such and such and such. So, can we then say that white people through ignorance are white supremacists? Or should we say that this is really just a conversation of the elite, of the top 1% if we want to call it that, and that green economics is the only way to decentralize this power and to bring basically everybody onto a level playing field to be who they are supposed to be in this experience we call life. But anyways, share your thoughts. Share your thoughts on this and leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the above. Got it. Trilogy. Back to it. Let it go. Yeah. You keep work for bullshit, trap things all I know. Rolling out someone's prescription, I bet you ain't no. DSC, baby.